Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some more great news and the good news just keeps flowing. First up, Paul Tudor Jones says he likes Bitcoin, calls it a great portfolio diversifier to protect his wealth. And that's not really the big story. The big story is what he said on Squawk Box was where he said that he has put 5% of his total portfolio into Bitcoin. And if you don't know Paul Tudor Jones, I'm going to tell you he is a legend and we'll get into the whole story in just a bit. On top of that, we're going to take a look at World Mobile Token is finally launching on June 15th. They're the ones that have the integration in those uh, small villages, sub-Saharan Africa. And it uh, looks like they're also going to be working with the Tanzanian government. And uh, lastly, I just want to do a quick piece and talk about what we talked about yesterday, which is how I thought that uh, the Bitcoin mining shutdown in China was actually fantastic news for the global community of blockchain and how that relates to what is going on right now with Alibaba founder Jack Ma and how the government is just basically destroying him. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market so today. Hey, it's a good day. Uh, look, we're almost at 1.7 trillion. It is June 14th, around 10 a.m. El Paso, Texas time, and Bitcoin is up $40,000 to over $40,000. What the heck happened? Well, first of all, just like we talked about with World Mobile Token, uh, the president of Tanzania came out and says, we have witnessed the emergence of new journeys to the internet. My call to the central bank is to start working on that development. So essentially, they're calling out the central banks going, we want cryptocurrencies here in our countries. And this just goes along with other countries in Central America, such as El Salvador, Paraguay, some different other countries that are looking into crypto, Bitcoin primarily. But this is good news. So uh, we had that, the Paul Tudor Jones story we're going to get into a little bit. And some car salesman said something about accepting Bitcoin at some point, whatever. So that is what is going on there. Let's take a look at the overall prices real quick. Uh, what is going on? Um, Bitcoin, we know. Ethereum's up. Everything should be up pretty much, uh, except for stable coins. <laughs> But they're stable, who cares? Polkadot, 12%. Who are the big winners? 17% for Chainlink. Wow, watch out. 9% for VeChain, 5% for Tron, 13% for Aave. That's good. That, that project's a good project and it just keeps lagging. So I'm glad to see it catch up. 25% for AMP. So remember when we always were talking about the dip and everybody kind of most, eh, some people kind of freak out a little bit about it. If you're watching this channel, you know what I say. I say, look, just a dip, not a big deal. Good, good ideas maybe to look into buying a little bit like I do every single time. And then just go from there. So if you bought the dip and just held on it, uh, congratulations. It's a, it's a great profitable day. And I think the best days are ahead of us. And also if you're a trader, I'm not really much of it, but uh, over at Trade the Chain, they can break down. Holy smoke sentiment. What the heck is this? Oh, Tether. Yeah, Tether. That's not gonna do much. Green Power. Look at Green Power, Balancer, Horizon, and Ocean Protocol. You're looking at what the heck? 260. No, these are not enough tweets. Don't look at those. 92% for Horizon, Ocean Protocol, and Kava. 92%, uh, 60%, 53% over the next hour. Um, these are risky plays. But uh, again, what I look for in sentiment analysis, if this says not enough tweets, I don't even look at it. Go down a little bit farther and see if there was a pump beforehand. So we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, let's go into today's top story, shall we? That's what we're here for. All right. Tudor Jones likes Bitcoin, calls it a great portfolio. I'm not going to read the article. It's kind of dull. What I really want to do is just ask the question, why do we even care what this guy says? You know, first of all, who's Paul Tudor Jones? That's the big question. Well, Paul Tudor Jones, uh, he is a hedge fund manager and a legend. Uh, and the reason is because he predicted the 1987 stock market crash. So this is going to fall. I know it's going to happen. I've been in this game. And never, no one believed him. <laughs> then that's a, then a big crash came about. Then he's the uh, founder of the Tudor Jones Group. His net worth personally is $7 billion, uh, But I think uh, the Tudor Group itself has $21 billion assets under management. And over on May 8th, 2020, he states he'll put 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. And now he's just talking about Bitcoin straight off. So um, this is a guy who's been around. And anybody who is in this space knows he is one of those guys that people look up to, to see for guidance. And then on top of that, um, another reason is, is that, look, here's where all the wealth is in America. And it's, uh, it's not taken away from anybody, but it's just what it is. Baby boomers have a lot of money. That's uh, how it goes. Uh, Gen Xers and millennials, not too much, but they do have disposable income. And even though I wanna preface it with this, 
even though that, uh, you know, we have the Gen Xers in that certain age group, millennials are younger, baby boomers, you know, 55 and above, they do have a lot of money, but it depends on where they're actually putting that money. I believe that the baby boomers look towards these types of guys, these Paul Tudor Jones, these Fidelities, these Black Rocks to see where they're going as far as investment and put their money into those uh, diversifications. Gen Xers and millennials, especially millennials, are looking for a little bit more of, let me blow this up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So the thing with the older generations, like myself, uh, we don't like to take too much risk uh, because we're uh, in a later stage in our life where we've kind of accumulated and we're like, you know what, I want to get things a little bit more safer. And uh, that's why we look towards uh, other things to see what's the safest option or what's the highest upside that uh, has the lowest risk. And then uh, it really just depends. I mean, there's some people that are older, they still like to you know, do a lot of different things. But, even, but millennials are people that are younger, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, they're like, well, we have a lot of disposable income. And the same thing that happened with uh, GameStop, you saw what they could happen when they all get together. They can do a lot of financial investing and they can pool their resources and make uh, a lot. So I think to me personally, I listen to the Paul Tudor Jones, the Black Rock, see what they're doing. I report it to you, but I'm also looking to see like, what are the fundamentals? What is going on? What is actually happening for people who are like investing and even uh, for trading, because I think if we can merge both together, then the whole market cap grows. So this is just one of those reasons why we do, or I talk about these things and these people. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to uh, read the article. I'm just going to show you what Paul Dieter Jones said on Squawk Box. That's the easiest way to do it. So this is what it is. It's about a minute or so. Just take a listen. And here we, let me make sure that I've got adequate volume. Go. You last, uh, I wouldn't say last spring, said, you know what, I'm getting into crypto for the first time. Again, I thought things were crazy then. I think they're crazy now. Bitcoin, listen, I like Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is math. And math has been around for thousands of years. And it, two plus two is going to equal four, and it will for the next 2,000 years. So I like the idea of investing in something that's reliable, consistent, honest and a hundred percent certain so bitcoin has appealed to me because it's a way for me to invest in certainty where again i look at the difference between the fed of 2013 the fed of 2021 i'm going how how can this do i want to have faith necessarily i look at the difference between trump and biden do i want to have faith in that same reliability and consistency of human nature so before we move on and he starts to talk about his allocation, there's another reason why I like Paul Taylor Jones and why people who are in that older generation, when we talk about risk, are really going to like him because Paul Taylor Jones, this was just done today, June 14th, yeah, it says the Fed's credibility is at risk with inflation view. And he pretty much just calls out Jerome Powell and said, look, if you don't do the right thing, this is your defining moment. And if you keep printing money, it's going to end badly. If you think that the economy isn't red hot, it's doing quite well. If you dump a bunch of more money in there, it's going to ruin everything. And when people hear these types of things where they're like, hey, uh, that sounds pretty risky. I don't really know what's going on with the dollar as far as hard assets. And this Paul Tyler Jr. is talking about uh, Bitcoin being just as good as, as gold and some equities. I'm going to probably trust this guy. So let's finish up uh, what he says here uh, about his allocation. And the linear nature of human nature, which we know is anything but that. You like Bitcoin at these prices? Um, I, I, listen. You got I, in what? Oh, at about ten thousand. I, mm -hmm. I like Bitcoin as a portfolio diversifier. Everyone always asks me, "What should I do with my portfolio?" My employees say, "I say, okay, listen. The only thing that I know for sure is I want to have five percent in gold, five percent in Bitcoin, five percent in cash." Five no. percent in commodities at this point in time. I don't know what I want to do with the other eighty percent. I want to wait and see what the Fed's going to do because what they do. Yeah. So perfect. So a couple things to break down there. Remember this. You have to remember this. When he says that this is what I'm going to do right now, he could change his mind. He can go like, you know what? Uh, gold isn't so great or cash isn't so great or i'm going to put a little bit more in my portfolio or he might even say you know what instead of bitcoin five percent i went out of three percent this is what he's doing right at the time so this is when it's hot this is when you know when people hear this they're like 
Okay, that makes sense. So later on, don't be too upset if he's like, well, you know, I rebalance my portfolio. But right now, it's kind of interesting, like we just talked about when I showed you with uh, Paul Tudor Jones, the company, like this was in 2020. He stated, I'm gonna put 2% of total investments in Bitcoin futures. Now he's saying 5% into Bitcoin and equities. And he's giving you, I mean, he's basically just giving everybody the right information. The last thing I will say, which was a great question, which was asked by uh, the commentator here, didn't you get into ten thousand dollars and he kind of just like bypassed the whole question like ah, yeah yeah whatever i guarantee you did i guarantee you got in a little bit earlier than that and that's why he's probably wants it to go up usually people don't come on and talk about i'm going to get into it and then they get into it before it's as it's already going up it doesn't make any sense so uh that's just what it is so let me understand in the comment section i find this uh, extremely bullish for a lot of reasons i just talked about and uh, let's move on to our next piece so next up World Mobile. Uh, if you've watched this channel or Dan Clips, where I go over more of advancement things and new things coming up, World Mobile token, I think, is going to be huge because like we talked about yesterday and today and then a video that I did uh, not too long ago where we talked about just what it is and I had uh, CEO M Mickey Watkins on. Basically, they are uh, doing that last mile. Telecommunications and internet service, uh, cell phone, uh, mobile ID, uh, finance, healthcare. I mean, they're trying to do a ton of things and they're working with the IOHK team at Cardano and their token is built on the Cardano blockchain. And people have been asking me about this, about when this token, what they call is a token generation event. Uh, and that is going to be going live uh, potentially tomorrow. This is what uh, I gathered from their little snippets, which was I think yesterday. And it just says coming June 15th. When you go to, and I'll link this in the description below, but if you go to worldmobiletoken.com, click on buy tokens, it just says coming soon. Just so you know, Americans cannot get into this. It is not available for Americans. I will say this, I am an advisor, which means I am going to be able to get into this even though I'm an American citizen. So just so you know, I will have skin in the game if you are someplace else and want to get into it. And just to be 100% transparent, uh, I want to be a part of this for a very long time. So much so that I'm going to be a node operator. I'm going to be uh, a, a node staker and you're going to need a lot of different tokens for that. And that is my goal. I'm going to bring the team that I use for the Cardano staking pool, uh, DNews, and we're going to be uh, staking and being in a, uh, an operator for this because I believe this is a long, long-term investment. And just like what we had talked about previously, when I was saying that uh, the government of Tanzania, the president comes out and says, we want cryptocurrency. Well, guess what? Uh, this token, uh, this uh, uh, world mobile token, the first place they did this on a working actual product was in Tanzania. So I can't put it together uh, even more simply than that. So I think it's a great thing. If you want to watch the whole interview of what we, me and Mickey talked about, and he explained it a lot better than I can, uh, just uh, do a search for digital asset news clips. And the last four we've done is all about the ecosystem. As far as Cardano, we took a look at uh, uh, Card Starter, the Oracle Project Charlie, Synthetic Assets at Indigo Protocol, and uh, the first one uh, was with Mickey at World Mobile Token. So I'll link that in the description below, but uh, that is what is happening. But again, long-term investment, I think it's gonna be great. And then lastly, I just wanna say one last thing. Uh, I just wanna do, do a quick follow-up for what I talked about yesterday, which was Bitcoin mining operations are shutting down in China. I think this is great news and I'm really happy. Let me, uh, here is the article. Let me blow this up real quick so you can see what I'm talking. So the article comes down to Jack Ma and Jack Ma is, or was, or somewhere in between the CEO of Alibaba, which is one of the largest uh, companies in the world. And it was uh, actually only rivaled by um, Google and Apple I think one other one, uh, it gets to in this, in, in this article. And uh, I just see some, some parallels between what's going on with Jack Ma uh, and uh, the, the government stepping in and pretty much crushing him and on, on top of what is going on with the, uh, the Chinese Bitcoin operation. And I, for one, like I said yesterday, am 100% happy that China is doing this. I want all those mining operations out of China and I want to put them into uh, any parts of Europe, Kazakhstan, and of course, Central America, and right here in the good old Texas, we will take as many 
Bitcoin mining operations so we can build jobs, not only for the infrastructure for Bitcoin, but also for the renewables because we have a ton of wind and solar power. So thank you, China. We appreciate it uh, of, of your short sightedness. And uh, that's it. And when I say China, I just want to make this 100 percent clear. I'm talking about the government of China, not the people of China. They have no control over that. It's the government that really makes all decisions. And this really gets down to the heart of the matter. So this was a quote from China State Council. They said, the purpose is to rein in Ma Yun, said an advisor to China State Council, the country's top government body, using Mr. Ma's Chinese name. It's like putting a bridle on a horse. And that's how to put it, but that's what they said. And uh, so, Here's what they're doing. They're breaking up everything. Beijing is now doling out some of the most lucrative slices of Ma's business to new partners, quote unquote, of its choosing, including one of the most corrupt and financially shaky companies in all of China. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That, uh, well, yeah, we can, because it's a communist country. I think can just come in there and be like, hey, great job on, on this business. You're just a little bit too big. And we're gonna break it all up. Now there's monopolies and there's antitrust laws here in America, and we've done those things in the past. But it seems to me like this is more of a, a nefarious purpose, and I'm gonna to get to that right now. So this, real quick. So who is Jack Ma? Uh, Ma was the richest man in China. He was the creator of Alibaba, China's largest tech company, and the Ant Group, the largest fintech company in the world, in the world. Alibaba alone was worth more than a U.S. company, except for Apple, Amazon, and Google. Ah, which makes a lot of sense, right? The last minute, so they canceled his IPO, the Ant IPO, and this is at the last minute, and it was going to be the largest uh, IPO of all time. The Ant IPO had become, by October 2020, a frenzy. The share price ran up 50% uh, ahead of the date, and the Wall Street Journal called it a $3 trillion scramble. Imagine you were about to really solidify your position by uh, going through an IPO and the government says, nope, sorry. So all those trillions of dollars that you could have put in there and build a lot of great things, which Jack Ma did, it doesn't happen. So again, I see the short-sightedness of the government. That's how I see it. Now they're carving up the company. The central bank ordered Ant to form a separate financial holding company that will be subject to the kind of capital requirements applied to banks. <laughs> banks. That could open a door for big state banks or other types of government-controlled entities to buy into the firm. So all the banks and governments are going to have their hands right into Jack Ma's company. What was? Government also had its eye on one of Ant's most valuable assets. It's data derived from billions of consumer transactions it processes. So again... <laughs> China wants control over everything. He who controls the data controls all. And we saw that with the different things that happened in Facebook and their different uh, data processing and, and uh, all the different things with uh, presidential elections. I don't want to get in that. Uh, it is what it is. So data is huge. And that's why they were getting a, a competitive advantage because they had so much data on the people. Now China wants to say, you know what? We'll take that data. And on top of that, uh, we're going to build in the digital yuan so we can have total control of everybody. And if you don't like it, we'll just shut down your app and good luck buying anything. So stay in line or else. Lastly, Ant Group's money market fund was perhaps its most amazing and explosive success story. In just four years, the fund became the world's largest. Imagine that. They surpassed Fidelity and JP Morgan. They shocked all the banks because it was the largest in the world. Beijing took note, shrinking 18% in the first quarter this year and down almost 50% from its peak as it kind of just sliced it all up to all the different entities. Well, that kind of sucks. Now, this was the harsh one. I think this was, this to me was the worst because they closed Ma's Hupan University. I think I nailed that one. In April, Ma was removed as president of Hupan University, the ultra elite business school he founded and endowed in 2015. This is, this, the plan for Hupan was ambitious. It promised a fresh approach to business education in some respects going beyond uh, done anywhere. And what they would do was they would bring in all these different CEOs and all these great people, kind of like uh, Harvard Business School. If you know, if you have like a lot of experience, that, that's what they're looking for. They bring together these really great thought leaders and say, this is, you know, what we want to teach you as far as business. Same thing over in Hupan University. We want to get these, C these CEOs. I think you had to have a, a valuation of 4.5 million in your company to be a part of this elite group. Then they could all share ideas and all can get a lot of great information. And then they can go out and just dominate. And that's what was happening. So it was a great thing, but the government's like, nope, sorry, we're going to stop that too. And regulators approved Jack Ma's and group to start running a new finance company. It'll absorb the uh, $155 billion in outstanding loans. So 
good for them. The unit will become the centerpiece of Ant's restructured lending business, which had grown so large that it issued about one-tenth of China's non-mortgage consumer loans last year. So they're going to break that up and give it to everybody else. And sorry, Jack. Ant will now just own 50% of the new company. The other 50% is being handed out to several new partners. And before I get into this last part, I want you to see the parallels between China and America and how these things are operated as far as banks. Listen to this. The real shock is who gets the final seat at the boardroom table. Hurong Asset Management, they'll be giving, they'll be giving four, 5 percent of the business for nothing. Hurong is the most notorious bad actor in all of Chinese finance. The company was, was created as another one of the bad banks in the 90s and was swimming in polluted waters from the start, trafficking in bad loans, America. It later expanded its business recklessly into many other areas outside its charter, including risky foreign private investments, America. It is even today not entirely clear to Chinese authorities what it owns, because it's all out and they're just giving like a bunch of junk out there. Harang developed a culture of massive and systemic corruption led by its CEO, Lai Ziomin. I think I nailed that. Until his downfall in 2018. This year, uh, Harang has flirted with bankruptcy, banks, as its past sins catch up with it. It is the largest Chinese issuer of dollar-denominated foreign debt, $22 billion, and is said to be on the edge of default, which may provoke a regulatory crisis because it's majority state ownership. Hirong's trouble threatened the integrity of the larger fixed income market in China and could force a government bailout. I think we know about that one, America. And in January 2021, former CEO Lai Xiaomin, I think I said that right, was executed for bribery, greed, and other sins. It's as though the US government took a page and said, hey, Facebook, hey, Mr. Zuckerberg, here's your partner, Bernie Madoff. <laughs> so real quick, the guy who wrote this is great, George Calhoun, uh, follow him on Twitter. Uh, I actually tweeted out this story already, and I thought it was fantastic because everybody talks about, you know, how shrewd uh, China is and what they're doing and everything else. They got just as many problems as any other country out there. And I think they're making a huge mistake by doing these things. Only time will tell. I'm just happy that they're letting go of all these Bitcoin miners. Now they can go wherever they want to, or uh, that's the great thing about uh, free market enterprise. You can just go to the places that uh, have a need and a hole and fill that hole. And in this case, it is Bitcoin mining operations. And uh, we'd love to do that here in Texas. So we welcome everybody who wants to come. Actually over there in uh, West Texas, where I'm at, uh, guess what? We've got a lot of those operations going on. So look, that is it for today. I think we're on a, a nice little streak. Let's see if we can continue and uh, let's see what happens. But uh, I feel pretty bullish today. It's a good day. Let's see what happens. Anyhow, if you like that video and think it, it uh, found value with it, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Uh, a lot of things we talk about on this channel are time sensitive. Over at Dan Clips is, are the other videos, which uh, I'll link in the description below. And that's all. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.